Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. The adventures at Staten Island continue. We're starting off today with a 1998 Chevy Corvette, sexy red. Now this thing kind of has a long history. I guess it sat for a long time. And it looks a little rusty and crusty and forgotten. But <clears throat> uh, first it didn't run at all. Uh, I think they put in a new computer, it was just all corroded. Keith programmed that in, and now it starts, but it runs like crap. It's just misfiring and carrying on, so first thing, I'll uh, start it up and let you listen to it. Alright, let's see. Give it some gas. It's running on like literally four cylinders and it just stalled out. So, it does run, but not very well at all. Uh, got the various hooked up trouble codes. Just a quick scan first, we have camshaft sensor si circuit signal low. That could be a problem. Ignition coil B, primary circuit problem. That's definitely uh, also a concern. And TCS PWM circuit, no frequency signal. What is TCS? Is that the traction control system? I'm not quite familiar with that code, so we can jump into our troubleshooter. It's a 1571. The troubleshooter, let's see if we have a 1571 description. 1571. <clears throat> Set of desired torque signal. It's less than 5% greater than 95% desired torque signal not received by PCM. Mill will not illuminate. Store failure record. It will command the EBTCM, the electronic brake or traction control module, via serial data to set a DTC. It will turn off traction control. Okay, so we're not worried about that code. We have to focus on this camshaft position and the ignition coils and just um, go from there. So, let's back out of here. I want to see what live data is available first. Let's see if we have, for example, misfire data. I don't know if the misfire counters even work with the camshaft position sensor signal missing, but let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> it's got the beastly 5.7 liter. So, let's give it a shot here. So our misfire counters don't work because there's probably no cam signal at all. So let's go, let's uh, do a little research here while we're still on the scanner. and see what this camshaft position sensor is all about. Point information. It's three wire, you need a resistive type sensor with internal analog to digital converter circuitry, so we should have a square wave. The sensor provides PCM with 1x cam signal for ignition timing reference and to synchronize fuel injection. So that is, that is a key input. So I think we should start with that. And right here it says location, that CMP connector, top rear of engine near flywheel housing, interesting, top rear. Okay, so this is a overhead valve engine, you know, with the push rods. Oh, sorry about the GM dinger. There we go. You guys are probably getting annoyed already. So, okay, that's good information there. Let's look up the crankshaft position sensor. Just curious, maybe to get a cam crank waveform. Uh, okay, three wire sensor, and this sends a 24x signal to the PCM. Use the signal to determine crankshaft position for the injection, ICM control, and misfire detection. Okay, this says reluctor wheel uses two different size notches for faster identification which pair of cylinders is at TDC. So I'm guessing if we don't have the cam 
signal present, then it'll it'll either like group fire the injectors or you know do like a waste spark system. It knows which pair of cylinders are a TDC, so it'll fire both of those coils at the same time, something like that. So it kind of runs, but obviously uh, we need to take care of this camshaft position sensor signal first and uh, go from there. And it says the, the crankshaft position sensor is fitted behind the starter motor. Uh, but it does give a pinout of the PCM, so if you really want to, we can go there and check that signal. Okay? So, let's go for this camshaft position sensor, see where it lives, back probe it. You, you guys know the drill. So, top rear of engine near flywheel housing. Do you guys see any way that we can even get close to the top rear of the engine? This thing is freaking packed in here. Jeez. Hmm. Well, and the PCM lives in this really crappy location, like under the battery down there. You can kind of see the top of it. So we might have to pull that up and just do our testing at the computer. But if we have no signal at the computer, then we have to go towards the cam sensor. And to get to the cam sensor, I, I just don't know. This is gonna be a real, real tight squeeze in here. So let me poke around and see if there's any way, I mean, there's literally, I can, can't even squeeze my finger between this intake manifold and the firewall. That's crazy. Hmm. I don't know if I can remove this cowl. That's kind of a pain. So I'm using the good old Harbor Freight inspection camera to look behind this intake manifold and that is our guy right there, I think. Three wire connector. It's all covered in oil. All crappy. Hmm. Well, you can kind of, kind of see it right through that gap. Right in there. I think that's our guy. So if we can, if there's any way to get to that, I'd love to know. But there's, I don't think I can squeeze my hand back there at all. That's kind of, uh, kind of a shame. So, you might be able to trace the harness a little bit and, uh, you know, poke a wire. Because back probing that thing, I don't think that's going to happen. So we're trying to make some room back here. I took off the PCV hoses. And this is what it looks like. That nylon line snapped. This thing was destroyed. Nasty rubber elbow, so that could be a problem too with the vacuum leak. That little nylon piece snapped off there. So that's a good start. So let's see if we can get any uh, closer from, from that side to that camshaft position sensor. All right, so I managed to get through this little tiny opening with a long piercing probe and all the way down there I'm piercing one of the wires. It looks like the orange wire. So we should turn that on. I think it's going to be our 5-volt reference. So let's see, turn the key on. And we have absolutely nothing. Hmm. That sucks. All right, we're making some progress here. I actually pulled up a real wiring diagram for this camshaft position sensor. So it looks like we have three wires. Uh, a is brown and white, the cam sensor signal input. B, now it's kind of confusing. B is like on the other side. Pink and black, reference low, so that's ground. And then red is our ignition feed. So right now I'm on the red wire, C. And we do have battery voltage on there. You turn the key off. That should go away. There you go. So the computer turns out, you drop down. Excellent. So that's check for one wire. Now we have to back probe the other two. So 
there's the camera on there so I'm back probing that red wire right now um, then the next one B pink and black it doesn't look like a pink and black but it could be discolored from all that oil so that should be a ground we can test that with a test light and finally the last one should be the signal all right so we are on the signal wire since it was easier to grab one of the side wires in the middle ground reference so that's the one we're testing let's crank it over and see see what we have there's our cam signal that is cool stop that okay that makes me happy because we don't have to like, you know, do anything else at the cam sensor. We need to go to the computer, which should be a lot easier. So, let's zoom in on that. Just double check. So, <clears throat> the cam signal is from zero to battery voltage. Nice square wave little noise doesn't matter it's all about the clean transitions so let's save that and next step we're going to the engine computer one quick test on GM's you can do is to see if the trouble code is current you can say fail this ignition cycle turn the key on now first it will say no codes present because we haven't run the engine yet so start it up run it and any code that there you go. So those three codes instantly come up. So they're current. That just makes me feel better. We're chasing the right problem. It's not a history code or something. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's cool. So we're going to the computer next. So here's where the computer lives on this thing. That is the weirdest place for a computer. Right next to the right front wheel. So it should kind of come out of here. That's a big honking thing. And I just want to get it down to where we can get to these connectors down here, do some testing. All right, that's not bad. Now let's see which one's connector C1 and C2. So, <laughs> got the computer out. We're looking for cam sensor signal input, brown and white. Uh, right there, C1 pin four. So actually the pins, you can see there's a 1 there, there's a 20 there. So I don't know which connector is C1 or C2, but we can definitely know which pin we're going for. And right there on pin 4, I see a brown and white wire. This guy right here. If you go to the other side, C2 pin 4 should be a red, just to verify. So that's pin 1, and pin 4 indeed is a red wire. So that is C2. Not worried about that. We are worried about. We are worried about this guy right here. So instead of uh, tearing all this plastic off, I am just going to um, poke a small hole in this wire. Now I know it lives near the wheel, so we'll seal it up. No problems. But I want to see if the signal is getting here. All right. Can you see anything on there? I'll get you in the shade. Mm. Well, I'm gonna start it up and see what it looks like. Now our scale is one second right now. Uh, it's dropped down to 500 milliseconds. That should be reasonable. Stop. Start the scope. All right, let's do it.
Didn't even want to start that time. Huh, there's our camshaft position signal. But, what is all this crap? <laughs> Interesting. Something is superimposed on that camshaft signal. That is freaking weird. It is going from 0 to 12, but what is this stuff right here? I have no idea what that is. We did not see that at the actual camshaft sensor. Uh, I do want to get this thing running and then get, you know, get a running waveform, but th that's just weird. So let's try again. Get this thing fired up. See what that signal looked like. There you go, it's a beautiful camshaft position sensor signal. Nothing wrong with that. So, why is this new computer? New computer thinking that we don't have a camshaft position sensor signal. It could be because of these really crusty connectors, I guess. So we have to take this you know connector off and check pin fitment. But there's nothing wrong with the wiring coming from the sensor to here or the sensor itself. So I buzzed the connector off and that lady right there just might be your problem. These pins look nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. So that might explain our misfires. Our, um, so see pin four, that's that guy right there. And man, this is junky in here. Oh, do you see that? So pin four, look at pin four down here. You see how it's messed up? One, two, three, four. At least those two are something right there is messed up. Uh, let's see. There's the pink wire. Oh, there's nothing on the first three pins. And the fourth pin. I don't know. We got we got to take these off, clean this connector out and try again. So I knew something was weird about how these connectors looked. So it's supposed to be covered in plastic like that. These naked pins are not supposed to be exposed like that at all. But these guys, oh man, that just looks terrible. And look, like that pin right there, that's bent. Some of those pins are kind of pushed in. Yeah, it looks kind of crusty. So guys, I'm looking at this pin pin 4, camshaft position sen sensor signal pin, and look what we have under this, oh man, green crusties to the max. I bet if I pull on that pin, it's going to pop right out of there. Well, it's, it's still connected. It's interesting. I've never really taken apart one of these connectors before, but you see the green crusties in there? Yeah. I don't know if we can pull this through a little bit. Work on it out here. I don't want to pinch it shut either. Carefully. Uh, 
Oh man, the green the green crusty's got the best of this one, huh? Oh my gosh. The brown and white wire. So that corrosion got in there. We can do a continuity check from here to here. I think that, that might be a good idea. So that's our resistance check from brown and white wire to this pin and I don't know, it's just kind of jumping around everywhere. I mean there's still continuity surprisingly even though it looked really bad. See right there. Mm. I don't know. Maybe spray it with some WD-40 and plug it back in, huh? Another thing that you want to look at is obviously this connector, C1, is the one that's really bad. And what do these wires control? For example, looking at our fuel injectors, you can see on C1, they're all in that first row. There's 9, 15, 27, 33. For example, that pink and black, right there, that's pin 9. Nasty. 10, 11, 12, 13, they're all in this row. And that's the really nasty row. Now look, let's look at the ignition coils and see where those are controlled. Now we had a ignition coil B circuit fault. Um, so again, on pin C1, ignition control. See, there's pin 13, purple and white. Pin C157, and here we have 1 through 40, and then 41 through 80. So the pins, even the pins on this side look kind of crusty. So I wouldn't be surprised that all the problems are just from that one connector. I would not be surprised at all. Again, C1, 53, 56. 52 and 54 and the injectors I mean we, we could do a current ramp on the injectors and uh, or the ignition coils that would definitely definitely tell you if uh, they're dropping out if they're not being controlled for sure let's see fuel injectors are fed by fuse 22 and ignition coils are fed by let's see, positive ignition positive voltage comes from fuse 18 so it wouldn't be that hard to do a current ramp test alright guys I'm just gonna spray this down with a little WD-40 and I don't know what that's gonna do <laughs> But and then carefully, carefully plug in. I wish we had the you know those plastic covers to keep these pins in line. Because it doesn't help if they uh, shift around like that. So it could either be a corrosion issue, pin alignment, fitment. I mean this is kind of a losing battle here. Well, Put it back together. Fire it up.
it definitely has a dead miss still. But it starts right up. So we did fix the uh, camshaft position sensor signal. So Who the man? Who the man? You the man. You the man. <laughs> uh, I'm not the done man. yet. You the man. Sounds good. <laughs> it sounds a lot better. Oh boy. It's all, it's all in that computer connector. It's all in there, yep. All the problems are right there. So it still has a dead miss, but we don't have that code for the cam sensor anymore. It starts a lot better. So, I mean, we can either try to redo that connector, get the plastic little uh, yeah, you know, get, clips get for there, and I mean, it starts a lot better now. Yeah, yeah. That PCV line it, it just crumbled when I uh, took it off to get to that to the sensor. All right. So, so let me just replace that. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely replace that. But first, we gotta get take care of this miss misfire. So, look at all these codes. Now we have shift solenoid codes, transmission range sensor codes, fuel level sensor, uh, and looking at a wiring diagram. They're all on C1, pin 35, 40, 34, 33, 32. All those guys. That sucks. I wonder if uh, the pins didn't go quite right. Might have to take this off again and put it back on. All right, guys. I think we're on the right track here. Let's plug this ignition coil back and see what happens. Now we just have a massive vacuum leak from that PCV valve, but I think we might be in good shape. Let's uh, clear the codes again. No codes present. Let's uh, fire it up. Let's just plug off this uh, vacuum line and I think we should be in pretty good shape. Alright, the vacuum line is plugged off with a valve stem. Let's see. somewhere all right so these codes I'm not too worried about right now torque output circuit no big deal awesome let's look at some data look at the fuel trims Oh, so we have a 128s here. It's, uh, oh, it's still an open loop, so let's get into closed loop first before. Bank one sensor one's at 100 millivolts. Let's bank one sensor, bank two sensor one is still, still low, so no big deal. So those two codes that were left, they actually have to do with the traction control. And we're in the ABS module. Boom, no com. And it lives right in the same place. So a separate issue, but hey, we got it running and it sounds awesome. So all the problems were in this connector right here. 
so I still want to see it go into closed loop here. Closed loop. Fuel trims look freaking fantastic. So I'm happy. That's it for this one. Uh, I don't know if we're taking for a test drive or not, but if we do, there's some bonus footage. If not, see you on the next one. Uh, that was pretty, pretty cool diagnosis.